Very good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our arrival press conference with Dean Alga. Um, as usual, I'd just like to remind everyone to please ensure your monitors are muted. You ask one question at a time, and um, that we keep the question short and sharp so that we can um, ensure everybody gets a fair chance. We'll start with Ken and then move to Nathan. Thanks, Ibukazi. How's it, Dean? Um, you, you must be a bit grumpy with a, a handful of your teammates. Uh, the, the last time we spoke to you, you uh, pleaded for a bit of loyalty to be shown. Um, that hasn't worked out the way you wanted. Um, and now they've also, uh, with a pretty poor display in the ODRs, handed Bangladesh a lot of momentum going into the test series. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ken. That question didn't take too long. Um, at least it was the first one out. Um, but yeah, I, I think a, a lot of events have happened since my last uh, interview around this very topic. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable where I sit with uh, the players that aren't here. Um, I've had some really good, <clears throat> excuse me, in detail chats with those players and just to find out where they are uh, mentally from a from a playing the Test Cricket Series point of view or going to the IPL. So I'm very comfortable with the answers that they've given me. Um, be as it may, they're not here with us and we have to make do with uh, with our next best that we have in, in the country, um, which I'm still very confident with. Um, yeah, we've lost a few test caps along the way, not having those uh, IPL players with us, but it's now a great opportunity for those guys to uh, to stand up and, and put the put those other players under pressure, which uh, I'm pretty confident that they that they can do that. Nathan? Um, good day, Dean. Um, how are you guys looking to approach this series um, series after an ODI series loss and losing a few players to the upper, as Ken said, um, especially with the bulk of the bowling attack? Um, yeah, I think what happened in the ODI series is, has hurt quite a lot of players. Um, even myself, who wasn't involved, I'm still pretty hurt about the, the result that happened. So I'd like to think that's obviously fueled us a little bit more. Um, a hunger, a hunger is obviously going to be right up there with regards to this. We know that um, this Bangladesh side is not one of old. Um, they're a new new team with a, a westernized coaching staff who's obviously changed their their mindset with regards to how to play cricket in South Africa. Um, so I think the the contest between them uh, is is going to be quite uh, is going to be a good one. Let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So with regards to that, we're just trying to be nail been nailing down our basics with the new players, giving them a bit more of a defined uh, role with regards to how they should approach playing. Yeah, uh, especially in Durban. Um, but yeah, in saying that, uh, the excitement levels and the hunger levels are, are pretty much up there just because of uh, the experience of what happened uh, not too long ago. Hi, Dean. Dean, uh, just going back to you saying you've had some chats with, with players, I think I speak probably for a lot of people who, who would, especially fans, who I think want to get some insight into how these decisions are made. Is there anything you can say to explain why players have chosen to go the way they have? Um, look, I'm, I'm not, I think I'm pretty confined with regards to what I can and can't say. Um, but I know the players were obviously put in a bit of a situation with regards to them making themselves available. Um, obviously, uh, I don't know what has happened in the past with regards to NOCs and Cricket South Africa and the BCCI with regards to release of our players to the IPL. So um, I'm not very well educated with what has happened in the past with regards to that. Um, but I do know <clears throat> the players were put in a bit of a, a situation with regards to making a decision on their availability. Um, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them were, in, were, were put in all different situations and circumstances that they wouldn't have made a, a rash decision if um, it didn't really mean a hell of a lot to them. But um, like I mentioned earlier, I've, I've had conversations with players and I, I know where they where they stand with regards to us as a test side and them playing test cricket. Um, I just think they were put in a situation that was a pretty a pretty unavoidable unavoidable one. Bearing in mind that quite a few of the guys have never had IPL experience before, so they were all pretty much new in that environment. And I don't think they wanted to hurt the opportunity going forward uh, in that competition. Um, rightly so, we got to respect the situation they were put in. 
Um, and yeah, we have to move on as a cricketing uh, unit. We, we, we have to give uh, other guys opportunities and exposure now going forward. Uh, we can't lick our wounds for too long. I'm not one, I'm not one who's going to do that. And I have never done that in the past. So I'm not going to start now. Um, and, and as mentioned earlier, um, it's a great opportunity for those guys to come in and, and put those guys under pressure. Yes. Dean, with regards to your bowling lineup, obviously four of the well, yeah, three, and then Andrich, who's been injured, but also frontline bowler won't be there. Uh, what are you thinking um, in regards to how you line up with the bowling lineup? Is it also a possibility to play two spinners and bring someone like Simon Simon Armour in? I think all options at the moment, Dennis, is, is available to us. Um, we're still two and a half days out from from the test starting. So uh, we've had some really good conversations over the last day with regards to what kind of combinations would best suit us to, to take 20 wickets against the, the, the Bangladeshis. Um, so yeah, nothing has been set in stone just yet, but we have had some really good combination chats. Um, I mean, the two spinner option being it in Durban is, is very much a, a talking point for us. Um, it's just about what is the best uh, kind of uh, way we want to go about constructing the best way for us to get 20 wickets. Um, we, we are aware of the conditions in Durban or, or have been uh, one of a uh, little bit of a slower, lower wicket. Um, and I think we've got uh, a lot of the areas covered with regards to that. Um, so yeah, we have, had, we have had a few chats and I think at the moment now we've or me as a captain, I'm sitting with maybe a, uh, a three different kind of combination um, that, that we can go in with, uh, with regards to our bowlers. Sounds good. How's it, Dean? Um, Hi. Right, um, considering the way things unfolded in, in the one-day series and, and who did the damage for Bangladesh, by which I mean Taskin Ahmed and Sharif al mostly, um, you must be, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic, you must be quite happy that you're playing them in different conditions, you know, compared to high fall conditions where South Africans would normally favour themselves. Are you, are you happy to get down to slower pitches? No, not really. Um, I still think our best, uh, our best test cricket is played in the high felt. Um, I've got no say over the, the structure or, or, the, or the situations of where these venues or when these venues were scheduled. So hopefully in the future that can change. But um, yeah, I'll still be extremely happy to play against these guys in the high felt. I don't think we've got anything to fear with regards to that. I think we play our best cricket brand uh, in that area. But I, I feel even though we, we're playing in, uh, in, in conditions that's a little bit lower and slower, we, we, we can adapt to that situation. Um, so yeah, um, irrespective of where we're playing, I'll play them anywhere. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. I've played, for, from a personal point of view, I've played against um, mighty cricket nations on, on really, really tough surfaces in the high field. And we've, we've had a lot of success out of that. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not too phased uh, about us playing on a slower wicket or a quicker wicket or whatever the case is. I just think we need to nail down our basics again. We need to, we need to do the basics for as long as possible. We've got to outplay them with regards to that. And um, yeah, that doesn't change from venue, venue to venue. Can you say Craig and Ken? Um, thank you, uh, Spokas. Just a quick one of cricket, Dean. I was made aware that you were coached by Elliot Farner at St. Dominic's and he just passed away recently. Do you have any yeah. word on him and his unfortunate passing? Um, he was a great man. I remember he was, um, he coached me when I was in primary school and um, it went over, obviously into high school times as well. Um, we were also associated in club cricket back home. <clears throat> and yeah, it was sad to see that he, that he passed so tra tragically uh, in a car accident. So yeah, obviously my sympathies go out to his family and uh, yeah, it's never a great time just to have a, a member that's been part of your upbringing just die so sudden. Um, so yeah, condolences to him and his family, but he was, a, he was an awesome human being. Hi, Dean, thanks, Kazi. Uh, just recently we've seen your test series against India, the one against New Zealand, the the, the India, I mean, the uh, West Indies in England and now Pakistan and Australia. We've seen some great test cricket going almost five days a lot of the time. Do you feel this is a, a little bit of a golden period for test cricket at the moment? Uh, maybe it's something to do with the World Test Championship has sort of rekindled the interest, but there really seems to be some tight test cricket between a lot of nations going on at the moment. Do you feel 
Do you feel there's something stirring in the test game? Yeah, I think um, it's definitely created a lot of chat and a lot more interest. Um, test cricket going into day five, last session is what you what you want to see. It's what you want to watch a lot more of. Um, so it was nice to see a lot of those series go into that. But I do think the the wickets kind of assisted those <clears throat> those tests to to be able to go into those uh, those really late stages of of day five. But again, it's it's created a lot of interest and. I think the talk around it is obviously that's kind of the old traditional way of playing test cricket, which has maybe lost its way a little bit because of the shorter version. Um, so yeah, it was it was nice to see those test series go go kind of the long haul, and it's almost like if you draw two matches, you still got that third one to play, and that's that's your biggest game that you can play in that series. And uh, if you win that, uh, those those first it's kind of two draws. Doesn't really matter because you've you've basically put everything into that last test, knowing the outcome. If you play well and implement your basics and do your test test match cricket basics, you you're gonna must probably give yourself the best opportunity to to have a result your way. Um, so yeah, I've been pretty much uh, I've been pretty uh, excited about what's happened uh, over the last uh, few uh, few months. Thanks. Okay. Dina. It there's been quite a lot of rain in Durban over the last uh, week or so. Um, just how dry is Kingsmead looking, though? The field, the field's a bit wet. I won't lie, but um, today is, doesn't look like there's any sign of rain. It's an absolute scorcher this morning when we had practice, and I think tomorrow is another very hot one. And I think the day after that's also pretty warm. But but you know, Durban's so unpredictable when it comes to this. Uh, the, I think that's the toughest job in the world, being a weatherman of Durban. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. You can't really prepare or plan too much around weather. Um, we know Durban's renowned for having pretty much uh, indifferent or inclement weather. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things. We just have to crack on and kind of focus on what we can focus on. And um, yeah, that's kind of been a strength of ours of late is, is just trying to control what we can. So Dean, the, the pitch is it looking? Oh, is the pitch looking dry, or is there a bit of grass still on there? Look, we've we've obviously want we want more grass on the wicket, and um, I think the preparation has been pretty good up until now. Um, I'm not too familiar what they've done, but it seems like grass has grown a little bit here in Kingsmead. Um, I think it helps if you put water on the pitch because that tends to make grass grow. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's, there's a little bit of grass uh, cover on the wicket. Um, hopefully they can get it nice and hard and it can create a bit more pace and bounce in the pitch. And hopefully it's a wicket that lasts five days. Um, but the nature of Kingsmead of late has has been the uh, lower, slower, a little bit more for the, uh, the spin bowlers. Um, but again, uh, it does seem like they've put a lot of effort into this wicket. Um, I think they also want the game to go five days. It's been a while since Kingsmead's had a test match. Um, so it'll be great to see this test also go into the five days. And um, we'll close with Mr. Maleta. Uh, thanks, uh, Sips. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, Dean. Uh, it's obviously very important to start well in any series. And this being a two-match series, I mean, and you know, the team having poor starts in the last uh, couple of series. Is there something you have, you have you have been planning behind the scenes to make sure that you know the team avoid a poor start in the series? It's always a talking point uh, for me around the squad. Um, I've emphasised a lot on it over the past uh, because we have naturally been known to start quite quite poorly. Um, Reason being, I'm not sure around that, but I mean, you need to make the players aware of these kind of situations and try and avoid these situations because that's giving yourself the best chance to to obviously give yourself a, a really good start in the season or oh, in the in the series. Um, so yeah, don't get me wrong; it is definitely a, a, a talking and thinking point within our squad. Um, yeah, we, we need to find a way not to start poorly because that really sets us back. Uh, and in a two-match series, we saw recently in New Zealand, I mean, when you're one nil down, you really got to you really got to focus and put a lot of energy on that last game to try and ensure that the result goes your way. Um, but I mean, if we start well and we have results going our way more times than none, we, we're going to win more series. That's what I 
that's what I feel because it's it seems like we we play a lot more like competitive and stronger test cricket the longer the series goes on. Um, so yeah, it will be nice to start the series well. Trust me, it's it's definitely something that we always want to do. Um, but yeah, it is a it has been a talking point of late, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try my utmost to get the message across to the guys that we need to start a lot better, especially in this series. Thanks, Mary. Uh, Craig. Okay. Craig, Could I... is, you would like to sneak a final question in? Yeah, sorry, Dean, just a word on the Proteus women in uh, the World Cup. Just, uh, I guess you've been yeah. keeping an eye on that. Just your feelings and uh, best wishes, I guess. Yeah, they've been brilliant. Um, I've been in communication with one of the coaches over there in Dylan Dupria. Uh, he was my teammate back in the day, so we've been communicating and I've been sending my wishes through through him to them. But they've been brilliant. I think they they honestly, of the over the last two, three years, they've definitely set the benchmark for our cricket in the country and uh, I think they're inspiring a lot more females to go out there and play the game. And I don't just think the buck stops there. I think they're ins inspiring a lot more boys and men to, to continue playing the game. But they've been brilliant. And uh, I mean, they, they've got a massive game coming up now. And uh, I think if they just kind of do what they've been doing of late, I think the result's going to be on their side more times than none. Um, but, you know, finals cricket is is never easy. But um, the way our ladies have conducted themselves around playing the game has been brilliant. Um, I definitely think it has rubbed off on the men's game as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully their success can continue and they can get us some silverware. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And on that fantastic note, we will bid you all adieu. Thank you very much. And we will chat to you um, on match day minus one. Have a good one. Thank you.